Are you ready to take your business to the next level? Every day, there are countless books and articles that are published offering the key on how to make your business a success. It's easy to feel overwhelmed trying to keep up and run your business. That's why Deb Creer created the Business Power Hour. Keep up on the latest trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. Let the Business Power Hour do the heavy work for you. Good morning, good morning. I am Deb Creer, and I am passionate about giving professionals the tools that they need to make themselves and their businesses as successful as possible. And I am so excited today because we're going to be talking about one of my favorite subjects, marketing, and in particular, digital marketing, and all sorts of other things about being an entrepreneur, being a family person, all these things. So please join me in welcoming Logan Hughes to our program today. Welcome, Logan. How are you doing? Doing very well. Thank you for having me on, Deb. I really appreciate this. Thank great, you. great. Well, let me tell people a little about you, and then we'll jump into this. So Logan Hughes is the CEO of Height Digital in Manchester, New Hampshire. He transitioned from eight years in medical services to successful entrepreneurship. His digital marketing side hustle turned into a thriving business, emphasizing creativity. As a family man, Logan advocates for work-life balance, and with over five years in digital marketing, he has led Height Digital Manchester to Inc. 5000 recognition twice. As a speaker, he shares insights on ROI-driven digital marketing and mentors professionals for entrepreneurial and mindset development. So again, Logan, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's a great intro. It makes me look a little bit better than I think I am. So you know, we always it. love hearing our, hearing our own, right? You know, we're like, ooh, that sounds pretty yeah. impressive. Um, and I put mine through uh, AI and and it really spiffed it up. Really like, sparked cool. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's still true, right? I mean, yes. that's the thing. Um, yes. but, uh, but, but yeah, it's always interesting when we, when we, we know our own bios and I think part of it is because we hesitate to brag about ourselves and certainly. we really need to brag about ourselves because who else yes. will, right? Yes, cer certainly. Yeah. Well, I always like knowing how my guests got to where they are today. So tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, I will, I'll give you the long story here. Usually it's a short version, but I'll, I'll give you the long story here. Um, so as, as mentioned, uh, I, I was in medical device sales for eight mm -hmm. years in mm -hmm. Boston. And before that I was, uh, well, I should say st still to this day, I'm a very creative person. Mm -hmm. I love everything around art, music. Okay. I graduated school with a graphic design degree. Mm -hmm. Um, and then as soon as I graduated college, I went directly the opposite way into, uh, sales, medical device sales, okay. uh, which was a great job at the time. You know, my mm -hmm. cousin owned, um, a small business with him and his partner. Mm -hmm. um, at the time, there was maybe two reps and then me. Uh, and then, you know, seven years later, uh, they've had around 12 reps, uh, 12 reps uh, wow. around uh, New England. So mm -hmm. um, that period of time allowed me to buy a condo, mm -hmm. you know, get my, it was just my wife and I at the time. And, mm -hmm. you know, financially, we're, we're really, really good. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it wasn't until about, six years in that I started getting this feeling of um you got that I wasn't itch. yeah yeah it was just something something else um mm -hmm. I, I wanted I wanted to be of service to others I wanted okay. to help out where I could mm -hmm. uh, first and foremost and then at the same time I was just not utilizing that creative mm -hmm. part of my brain right. that really gave me the fulfillment mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh personally so um I saw an old Ty Lopez Facebook ad come across my screen about social media management. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, this is cool. Mm -hmm. um, you can create posts for businesses that may need help. And um, that's a great thing. And then mm -hmm. I could be creative and do that. So that really kind of, that shifted my mindset and being like, okay, I think I can mm -hmm. probably start something. And that led me to finding out more about what digital marketing <laughs> is. Mm -hmm. Um and I and from there I, I really started learning about meditation and practicing on mindset and mm -hmm. affirmations, manifestations. So I dug really, really deep in that for several mm -hmm. months. Um, and then a year out, so uh the beginning of the the last year I was there, um, I learned I it was Joe Despinoza, I forgot I can't remember his last name, mm -hmm. but he's really big in the mindset space. Mm -hmm. Um, he was talking about writing down 
um, what you're looking to accomplish. Um, so for me, it was, I'm going to leave my nine to five job mm -hmm. and start my own marketing agency mm -hmm. at the end of the year. Right. That was it. And then, so he, he told us to write that down three times in a journal to run your finger across it and then sit back and visualize what that would mean. Right. You were absorbing it. Exactly. And it touches all four, all, all senses, right? Mm -hmm. So like you're, you're, you're saying it, you're visually, you're mm -hmm. touching it and then you're internalizing it. Mm -hmm. Um, so I did that for a year straight, every single day for a year. Mm -hmm. uh, and along that time, I was, you know, I was building funnels. I was learning about Facebook ads, mm -hmm. Google ads. I found a mentor, my first mentor at the time that taught about website design. Mm -hmm. And that's what really kicked things off. I was like, mm -hmm. wow, I love website design. And right. this is something that actually could really impact mm -hmm. uh, a business, a business in general, mm -hmm. right? They need really good websites. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, a day goes by, I keep doing this whole thing. Mm -hmm. Come January, um, the time that I told myself I was going to leave, mm -hmm. I didn't. I didn't oh, have God. any plan in place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't mm -hmm. have any plan in place. And what was what ended up happening was about a week after, so to the date where I wanted to leave, mm -hmm. both my uh, my cousin, my boss, and uh, his partner called me into the office, and they were like, "Logan, um, your job is being phased out." We're going to give you a month to be able to find something else. Mm -hmm. And to me, that was. You were like, well, darn. Yes. <laughs> I'm not prepared for this. No, yeah. it was. It, it was. Uh, no, no, no. It was. It was. It was actually very, very. It was the universe. It was uh, the kick. Wherever. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. It was mm -hmm. that kick being like, you know, you've been mm -hmm. wanting this for so mm -hmm. long. Now's the time you told mm -hmm. yourself. So that was to me. Had like, they known I, that you were kind of thinking about this? They, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I was doing some mm -hmm. small side hustle stuff. I think mm -hmm. at the time, maybe I had, I think I was making maybe two to three thousand mm -hmm. dollars on the side. Mm -hmm. Um, it was, you know, not close to what I was making, mm -hmm. but it was something there. Right. Um, and my, and my, my cousin knew about mm -hmm. it, but you know, uh, I was obviously still, still glued to my chair there. Um, but that was a very eye opening experience. And of course, um, I went full in and, you know, I started, I left the, you know, a full-time job with all the benefits to not having any and working with my wife to kind of figure out what, what this looks like. Uh, fast forward a couple of years, operating as my first agency of seventh level media, um, had a, a couple 1099 empl employees working for me. And then I, uh, I digital got in touch with me and they had a really great franchise model mm -hmm. situation. So I literally went from having one or two people I was working with mm -hmm. to an agency that had over 115 mm -hmm. Um, so had everything with the, the, the SOPs, the processes in place. And here I am several years later now as a, a franchise owner mm -hmm. of, of high digital in Manchester, New Hampshire. And man, it's been, it's been a wild ride, but, mm -hmm. um, things are working out pretty well. And I'm, I'm extremely grateful and blessed to be in this position. I love it. You know, and, and it was interesting to me to see that you were actually a franchisee, mm -hmm. um, you know, because we hear about that with, you know, so many different businesses, I mean, you know, sure. clearly fast food, all of those things, you know, those are, are the things that we think of, but we, we don't think of them in service based type of, right. of industries like what we do. And, you know, and, and I love the concept because with any type of, of franchise, I mean, you do have this overarching big support system. Mm -hmm. where, you know, they have the manpower to do maybe national advertising or, you know, like you said, the, the, the staff, you know, you don't have to have an accountant because right. they have the account, <laughs> have right. Yeah. You know, and, and things like that. And, and I love that idea. And we've talked about it on the program before about how being a franchise owner, you know, once you've done the research, obviously, but it is a great way for someone to be a business owner, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so I love that idea. Yeah, it was, um, it's, it's very unique within the marketing world. I mm -hmm. don't know if there's another marketing agency that has, it, I can't think is. of any, I mean, you know, there's know. certainly marketing agencies that have multiple offices, sure, sure. but, but yeah, not ones where yeah. you are a franchise. Yeah. And to multiple points of, of why I joined, I mean, you know, obviously the, the staff, the mm -hmm. amount of uh, the fulfillment, uh, mm -hmm. creative team. Um, but for me, for me, it was, it was more about like that, that secure feeling, I guess, of like, right. you know, I'm not operating mm -hmm. as a freelancer anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. like an actual business owner. Now mm -hmm. I actually have to get my P and L's mm -hmm. in order. I have to right. worry about the right. financial piece mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. pay taxes and all mm -hmm. of that stuff. So it was, it was a major shift, but I've learned mm -hmm. so much. And 
Yeah, I think I think what I love about this from from a, how I can provide really amazing services to mm -hmm. the clients is the fact that we have so much data built up mm -hmm. in our systems for all the franchises across the country. Mm -hmm. So we know what works, right? You know, for a roofer in mm -hmm. Oregon, we know what mm -hmm. works in, you know, um, you know, an escape room mm -hmm. in Mississippi. Like mm -hmm. we have all these data built mm -hmm. up. So when someone comes to me and like, hey, have you worked in our mm -hmm. industry? Uh, regardless if I have or have or right. not, I know somebody has, has. Mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. I can pull in information mm -hmm. from them and just really quickly mm -hmm. talk to. Um, about what's working mm -hmm. and what's not working and uh, eventually give that to the client. Mm -hmm. So I love that part of it. And mm -hmm. I think that's really helped out. Yeah. Right. So how much freedom do you have? Because I know that's one of the things that, that sometimes franchise owners will say is, you know, and, and again, it depends on the franchise. You know, if you right. are say McDonald's, you right. are told you do this, this, and this, and mm -hmm. you do not do mm -hmm. this, this, or this. Um, now, some people, you know, if, many people obviously Love that mm -hmm. idea. They don't have to be thinking about their own marketing or you know any of those because it is done at, at corporate. But you know how much kind of flexibility maybe is is more the the way to put it. That's a great question, and um, we have <laughs> we have we have recently as as a whole as a as a company um, shifted on on some things because we. As an entrepreneur, we all think that our our, our all of our ideas are just idea, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So, and when you are working with the current company mm -hmm. or corporate that has a certain system in mm -hmm. place, there could be issues uh, of alignment, mm -hmm. right? Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's it's always it's interesting because I always viewed myself as more of a, a team player. Mm -hmm. Like I, right. you put me on a team, mm -hmm. I'm really going to excel, okay. and okay. I'm still learning about that mm -hmm. leadership component of it. So to me, getting handed down here, mm -hmm. Logan, do right. this. That's this is perfect. Work. Do this. Mm -hmm. I'm all in. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. It, but what's what's also great about this is that yeah, I mean, there's no, I don't have any overhead here. Mm -hmm. I'm working in my office across right. from me is my my baby's crib. You know, I don't have that that big brick and mortar mm -hmm. business, mm -hmm. but um. So I am still operating mm -hmm. as a, I guess, an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. right. um, but that has a business uh, type of deal. So mm -hmm. it's a really mm -hmm. good mix. So ultimately, I I'm, I got into the space because of that mm -hmm. that freedom aspect, being mm -hmm. able to you know uh, start a family right. and being home mm -hmm. with my child and and everything. Mm -hmm. But yes, to your point, it's really funny you mentioned that because we had a talk last week about this whole thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like really honing mm -hmm. in on the structure mm -hmm. of what a franchise does. Mm -hmm. And if someone comes in here, wants to be in the space mm -hmm. with us and are kind of thinking mm -hmm. sort of, I would say outside the mm -hmm. box, but you know, there has to be some alignment in that right. sense. Right. Um, and that's a very mm -hmm. strong component mm -hmm. of, of making this work mm -hmm. and uh, eventually right. making this scalable. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and of course they have their corporate mission and values, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and, so that's where, especially in, in, you know, the, the field of marketing and digital marketing, you know, they, you know, if, if you were to say to take on a client that they might not approve of, and it could just be something as sure. simple as your local city council election, right? right. Um, yeah. You know, and, and, and maybe they say we don't ever do politics, which is not a bad thing to say, right? In a lot of ways, it makes life easier. But, um, but yeah, you know, so there, you know, there might be things, but yeah, years ago I worked for, um, uh, an agency and we were lobbyists and, but I did oh. the marketing part of lobbying because there is marketing that is tied to it. I mean, oh, very sure. much so, but I remember that the guys that, that owned the firm, absolutely wonderful. I mean, when I decided to leave to start my own business, the hardest thing was going and telling them I was leaving because I just thought they were great. But, but they always told us, they said, now, if we have a client that you cannot absolutely commit to tell us, don't have to tell us why, mm. but we won't assign you to that. Um, mm. And I love that because we did have love some that. clients. I mean, like, you know, we, we had some clients that were considered edgy, a little controversial mm. even. And, mm. You know, and, and so some people would say, and I mean, clearly it was, it was politics. I mean, we were lobbyists and, right. um, you know, and, and, but yeah, they said, if you can't commit to that, then, then we don't, you know, it's, it's perfectly fine for you to not work on that. it. So it's kind of that reverse of that, 
-hmm. But, you know, it's, I think, you know, it, it also can be the, well, you know, I'm sorry, I can't, you know, city council person, I would love to help you with your campaign, but I can't. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> yeah. I say I can't. Right. But, um, but yeah, you know, kind of having that structure, I think it helps, you know, and, and, and it, it, what it may be doing is also helping you to define, this is what I want to do if, and when you go yeah. off on your own. Yeah, for sure. And, and, and being so sorry, my business as a freelancer wearing mm -hmm. multiple hats and I still wear multiple hats mm -hmm. to this day, but yeah, I mean, this, this process, certainly from leaving full-time job to being on my own, mm -hmm. to merging with height, mm -hmm. I've learned so much about mm -hmm. who I am and right. where, where mm -hmm. I, I need to be, to mm -hmm. be able to, you know, get really mm -hmm. good work done, but be happy. You mm -hmm. know, some people are ultimately dreamers and visionaries, right. which mm -hmm. is, you know, the owner of height is that, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you put him into weeds, some some strategic stuff, you know, he's whatever, but like- He hires somebody to do that for him, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And he's he's mm -hmm. that dreamer. And it, it's, it's I guess, ultimately finding your role and knowing who mm -hmm. you are as a person. And mm -hmm. uh, this has just been a great fit. Mm -hmm. So yeah, happy to be here for this. I love it. I love it. And like you said, you know, having that support- is is what is so good because that's i think probably you know we the stat is you know 50 percent of all business small businesses fail yep. and a big part of it is that lack of support you know or you know the they got into it because they wanted to be the best landscaper around they did not want to have to go to network meetings they did not want to have to do invoicing they did yep. not want to you know and and then when they have to do those things they're like yuck ooh ah um, you know, and, and, and then of course the, the, the big thing with so many small business owners is, you know, we, and I'm putting myself into that category, think, well, we have to do it all. You know, we, we have to do our own invoicing. We have to do this. We have, because we're the boss, right. And, you know, when you're starting out, sure, you probably do, but outsourcing and, you know, delegating and, and all of those things. That's the true success of many small business owners, you know, because they don't need, say, a person full time to do their accounting. They need an hour a week. So right. now they outsource it. Yeah, I um, when I when I worked with um, my cousin at his, his mm -hmm. you know, at his business, I was able to see them go from a two person mm -hmm. company basically to 12 reps. So I wow. learned so much in mm -hmm. terms of mm -hmm. and looking back when I was in there, obviously, I didn't think anything of it. But mm -hmm. now looking back on that, I'm like, wow, that was such a great opportunity mm -hmm. to learn about how a, a small business can right. can, can scale mm -hmm. now i would say that you know my what i learned a part of that what i've learned is to your point to know what you do well mm -hmm. and then delegate some of the stuff right. you don't do well to mm -hmm. someone who does mm -hmm. my cousin who i love dearly mm -hmm. um he he always he always fought fought back a little bit on that control aspect mm -hmm. where he was doing oh payroll. oh i know that yeah. feeling mm -hmm. yeah 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 <laughs> so and and that and that and to my case that was uh when i when i i, I built over 150 websites myself mm -hmm. and merging with height like mm -hmm. having them mm -hmm. fulfill the websites mm -hmm. i was still sort of in the weeds i was mm -hmm. like are you sure you want this and that right. i kept look, look mm -hmm. you know dating back to that experience mm -hmm. with them and being like listen you have to be able to trust someone mm -hmm. there's a lot of other people out right. there who do better work than mm -hmm. you do oh yeah um, so you have to be able mm -hmm. to give up that control mm -hmm. and ultimately that's uh that's mm -hmm. sort of that that winning solution there so right. yeah there was that i learned a lot from that experience mm -hmm. certainly right yeah i i started an initiative based on having cancer and you know we do websites we do marketing i mean that's what my my paying business is but I thought about it and I thought, yeah, I can do my own stuff and mm -hmm. do it halfway if I actually even do it, right? Right. Because all <laughs> these, and and so I made the investment to hire a brand person who developed the, the entire brand for what we were doing. And then I hired out the website. Now, mm -hmm. you know, I can maintain it because it's a WordPress website and I right. certainly know how to do that. But I also still know I, you know, she's going to do it faster, better, all those things than if yeah. I sit and do it myself, um, you know, and, and, but yeah, that control thing is like, but, <laughs> 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 you know, um, yeah. but it, the, the really funny thing, because when I had come up with the concept, you know, I have it in my head, right. Because we mm -hmm. do. Right. And so this is about cancer and it's about, you know, mm -hmm. how you deal with it. And so I had wanted this very stark black and white website mm -hmm. with just pops of color 
to emphasize mm-hmm. things. And I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be fancy. Ooh. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and she came back with something completely different. <laughs> <laughs> and my first thought was, but that's not what I asked for. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. my rational brain kicked in and went, but this is so much better. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Um, and yeah. so, yeah, but, but yeah, if I had maintained that control, I would have gone back to her mm-hmm. and said, you screwed up. And I'm not going to pay mm-hmm. you because that's not what I asked mm-hmm. you to do. Now, mm-hmm. should she have asked me, hey, can we go in a different direction? Probably. But mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, what she came back with was a thousand times better than what I had envisioned. Um, yeah. And I, you know, and I think that's just the thing with all small businesses. We don't want to give up that control because that's part of why we became a small business owner. Right. We wanted to be in charge. We didn't want to follow orders from somebody else. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And and and. and to your, to your point too, there, there, there was probably some some market research built mm-hmm. into that website of mm-hmm. what the audience would right. actually mm-hmm. want, right? Mm-hmm. So a funny, funny story you mentioned that because I talked to a business owner last week was interested in doing SEO for mm-hmm. his uh, for his website for his business mm-hmm. and uh, met with him and got through his website and now he has a Squarespace website. Mm-hmm. It's a it's it was beautifully done. It's built by his mm-hmm. his wife. Um, so that was that, that thing. Uh, mm-hmm. And at our company, we don't really touch SEO unless you have a, a WordPress website. It's just okay. sort of, um, what, right, what because we, you can, there are plugins. There's so many things that, that yep. you can do mm-hmm. than the Squarespace. But he was saying that there's no leads coming into his website. Um, the website's underperforming. Mm-hmm. And all these indications that the, the website was not doing okay. anything. Something's not out. working. Mm-hmm. But uh, his wife built it. And it yeah, was, so there's right? that so, gets really tricky. <laughs> right, exactly. So I'm trying to have this conversation where, and at the end of the day, you know, I, I told him, I was like, listen, you might think this website looks good and is performing. You right. might think that, but is your audience, does your audience right. think that? Is yeah. it are the people who are going to spend aud- money with you? Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. So that was that was an I think an eye opening experience mm-hmm. uh, for him, and mm-hmm. you know, hopefully we continue that conversation, but. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, to your to your point, like uh, to, to that control aspect, mm-hmm. you know, I might think that what I'm doing is great and is mm-hmm. going to reflect within mm-hmm. the market. But, you know, if I'm not doing my research mm-hmm. and it just it could be completely missing the mark on mm-hmm. what my message is to to mm-hmm. my audience actually wants to hear. So mm-hmm. it's, it's a hard thing to swallow, but sometimes right. we need to, to face that fact. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, and 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 that is why people hire experts, because, right. you know, we we see one thing. But like you said, the market sees something else. And, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, but, you know, and, and then, then I see the opposite of that. You know, I will, uh, I'll, I'll see like a television commercial and I'll think, well, clearly I'm not the market for that. Right. But then I'll also think, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, so I watch a lot of late night TV mm. and things like murder. She wrote. Right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, and, um, and, and the commercial will be for a high end, product that's aimed towards 20 somethings. And I'm like, mm. not quite sure they're watching murder. She wrote at midnight. And, you know, and so, yeah, my yeah. thought is, you know, my, it, when I put my marketing hat on, they wasted that money. Sure. You know, and, and so then what that's happens is of course they get their, their results back and, you know, they got nothing and mm. they get mad at the TV station. Well, you know, mm. maybe the TV station told them this is the cheapest which very well mm. could be. And that was what they went with, but did not explain to him here. Who, here is who is watching at that time. Right. Is that he is going to buy the product. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a great example of this is that the other day I, I received a mailer for hearing aids. You know, my <laughs> wife and I are, my wife and I are 30 something year olds with a two and a half year old boy. Like, well, maybe you, know, you I listen know. to your music too loud. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I probably am losing a little bit of my, uh-huh. uh, my hearing, but, um, no, it's something like that, you know, mm-hmm. as, certain, as easy as mailers could be, right. you know, it's just mm-hmm. that if you don't know who that's being sent to, mm-hmm. that's a wasted dollar, in my opinion. Right. So, oh, yeah. yeah, it's funny. Well, and, you know, it was funny. We were talking before the program started about the numbers, right? Mm-hmm. And, and you know, the fact that we all think the bigger numbers are better. We mm-hmm. want more followers. We want more fans. We want more, if you're a podcast, you want more, li- you know, m- listeners, but if that, if they, you know, and, and so you can have these huge numbers. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. if, if we start adding up a lot of numbers, in many cases, they do get really big. But if they're not the right people, then you're wasting your time. Um, you know, I, I, we do digital marketing somewhat. I mean, not a, not an awful lot, but, you know, a lot of times the clients want 
whatever is the latest and greatest, right? So right now, of course, one of the things people want is TikTok. Um, But yeah, one of my big clients um, had, you know, I, I, I do Facebook for them. And so one of them said, now this is, a, this is senior living. So that's going to give you the idea of who, and yeah. <laughs> now their market is actually not that demo. It's, it's people like me who, mm-hmm. you know, has mother, father, grand, you know, grandparents, yep. whatever, but, yep. um, you know, and, and, but yeah, their sales director asked me if we were going to put things on IG and I sat there and I thought about it for a minute and I realized she meant Instagram. <laughs> because a lot of people do say IG, right? But she was, IG, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But she, you know, she pronounced it. And I'm like, no, we're not going to do anything on IG. Um, but <laughs> I but I, I explained, I said, that's not our target demographic. You know, at that right. point, most Instagram users were a lot younger. Um, and they still trend that way. Um, you know, and and but but yeah, you know, if, if somebody were to come to me and say, Hey, we want this on TikTok. Okay. First of all, I have to learn about TikTok. That's one of those I have avoided because you know, I, I have to limit. I really have to limit what I, because yeah. I'm like squirrel, right? I'll watch every cute cat video there is. <laughs> and so, um, you know, I tell them if, if our, if our target market is not there, we're not right. going to waste anybody's time or, or energy doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, now, you know, there are certainly ways where you can do a little bit, you know, you can, you can, you know, use the, you know, one of the, the easy things is to use something like planable where you can easily post on multiple things, just click, click, click. So, you know, posting on one is just as easy as posting on 10, but, um, but yeah, it's like, do you really want to go down that, that rabbit hole? Yeah. I, I always say the same thing to my clients too. When we are, when we were talking about any type of marketing strategy, at all, it's okay. Where does your ICA live? Mm-hmm. Your ideal client avatar. Mm-hmm. Let's find a little bit more. And a lot mm-hmm. of times, what's interesting about this is that we 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 like to do an initial, I guess, audit or mm-hmm. process right. with the company to determine who that is, right? And a lot mm-hmm. of times, business owners, especially within the trades, mm-hmm. they don't really know. They're kind of out there going, whoever you know, if, mm-hmm. if someone needs plumbing work, I'm going to go do it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and when it comes down to growing the business, really honing in on mm-hmm. who that person is and your mm-hmm. demographic is mass. Now, you know, they might not have the tools at the time to be able to mm-hmm. find that out. And that's where we come in to be right. able to be like, okay, you mm-hmm. know, let's, you know, we can you know, figure some things out in, with Google mm-hmm. analytics, search console, Facebook ads, we can determine, mm-hmm. you know, the right demographic mm-hmm. and what's hitting. Um, but ultimately it comes down to where they live mm-hmm. and putting your advertising dollars mm-hmm. around that. Now, um, it's a funny story about TikTok is that we, I, I interviewed, um, uh, a guy, uh, Michael Johnson, who's owned a HVAC company for well over 20 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe he's in the Carolinas. Um, but he has a pretty good following on TikTok mm-hmm. and he's asking Interesting. He's a plumber. Uh, HVAC. Yeah. HVAC. HVAC. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but what's funny is that he has over, I think he has like 15,000 followers on there. Wow. He gets a ton of content mm-hmm. and he's known locally. Like he, he, he said he was like at a Walmart or something. And mm-hmm. some, someone's like, I saw you on TikTok. You're the TikTok <laughs> HVAC guy. Uh-huh. Right? So, so they knew HVAC. Okay. So that was exactly. Good. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's, and they recognize his, 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 uh, his business name. Um, so with that said, I, I've seen instances where businesses have utilized TikTok or even mm-hmm. Facebook videos or reels or, or just uh, any type of ads mm-hmm. to become locally viral, I right. guess. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're, mm-hmm. if you're, if your video is being shown on Facebook ad, you know, mm-hmm. 14 to 15,000 mm-hmm. people from a local perspective, right. um, that, that's a that's a really good indication that mm-hmm. you're you're sort of going viral in that local mm-hmm. sense and branding perspective, mm-hmm. which is a whole different story, mm-hmm. means so incredibly mm-hmm. much. Right. Uh, you know, social media is just all about showing up day to day, being consistent, mm-hmm. nurturing your audience, and if you can do that, mm-hmm. and if you can um, work with your employees, your technicians to do mm-hmm. that while on the job site, mm-hmm. that's going to be massively right. beneficial for for your business mm-hmm. in terms of that social media pros. Because right. eventually, I, what I hopefully we can talk a little bit more about this, but personality, mm-hmm. being personable on social mm-hmm. media is oh, yeah. everything yep. nowadays. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. the more your face is being shown, mm-hmm. the more your employees mm-hmm. are on the job taking pictures of them, mm-hmm. it's greatly mm-hmm. going to help your business succeed right. and distance yourself mm-hmm. off from your competitors who are right. not doing that. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, because it comes back to no like trust. 
I mean, yes. you know, we we've heard all of that. And, you know, and, and I always am amused with the social aspects because, mm-hmm. you know, we could see an ad for a product 900 times and go, Ooh. I mean, not even paying attention to it. But if somebody we don't even know on a social platform says, I love it, I hate it. We're like, okay. <laughs> you know? right. I mean, and, and it's funny because that's why obviously reviews are mm-hmm. so important. Oh. Um, you know, and 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 I always tell my clients, we absolutely positively have to respond to negative reviews. Now, sometimes yes. do we try to get them pulled? Yes. I mean, because mm-hmm. there are times where it's like, no, this is this is a disgruntled former employee. You know, mm-hmm. all sorts of things like that. But um, yep. or they, you know, Google does not like it if a specific person is mentioned because that, that can lead to other issues. Um, but but yeah, you know, that's why reviews are so good, because we don't care yes. that we don't know. them. Right. But what right. we love is that there were, you know, 15 positives and one negative, mm-hmm. um, you know, or thousands, um, you know, mm-hmm. and, and I mean, and we all rely on them. Right. You know, especially I do yeah. it when I'm traveling, you know, okay, oh, I'm certainly. looking at a hotel, I'm looking at a restaurant. What are the reviews? Um, mm-hmm. you know, well, it's and- even, I, yeah, I love so I love talking about reviews, especially mm-hmm. from from Google standpoint. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a weird thing to say, but I love talking about it because it's mm-hmm. right now, especially it's so uh, more powerful than it right. has ever been. Mm-hmm. Uh, Google within the last several months um, made it so the more reviews you get, the more quality reviews mm-hmm. um, and how fast you get the reviews are equivalent to like 70 to 80% of the overall search rankings, mm-hmm. right? So like right now it's ultimately super important. Mm-hmm. Responding to reviews are in general important. Mm-hmm. Uh, so non negative reviews also important. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, again, back to being authentic, mm-hmm. you know, if I, if I saw a business online mm-hmm. that has 500 five-star mm-hmm. reviews, I'm going to be like, Hmm. You know, there's something not one person right. had anything to say. So, Nobody you know, said anything bad. Yeah, no mm-hmm. one said anything bad. Mm-hmm. That's, so I, I tell my clients, like, listen, I understand. It's being a small business owner. Mm-hmm. You're doing everything possible mm-hmm. to do the right thing. Unfortunately, there's going to be circumstances mm-hmm. that come up. Right. Responding to them the right way uh, is is mm-hmm. uh, is super important. But right. here's a little tip that I would give uh, people who are listening here about res- actually how to respond to the mm-hmm. review in itself. Right. Now, uh Google optimizing your Google My Business page, incredibly important for mm-hmm. local SEO. And yep. what you want to do is you want to try to fill up the blank spot as much mm-hmm. as possible without it being super spammy. Mm-hmm. So when I when I told my clients, you know, if I have an SEO client, we're looking at Google My Business page, maybe they have, I don't know, 20, 20 reviews, they responded to half of them. Um, I, I will go back and say, respond to the reviews that you haven't responded to, mm-hmm. but list um Make sure you you add there the service that you mm-hmm. provided them, the mm-hmm. location, and your business name. Right. So you're you're using a service keyword, mm-hmm. um, location keyword, mm-hmm. and uh, we your love servicing self. your air conditioner in Atlanta. Yes, that was, but thank you for using HVAC name, right? Mm-hmm. So that as much information you can pull mm-hmm. in from Google and at aspect mm-hmm. uh, is great. So responding mm-hmm. to a negative reviews, you know, obviously you want to be you want to tell exactly the story is right. be professional, but. Mm-hmm. Sneak some keywords in there. It might mm-hmm. it might ultimately help you out in terms mm-hmm. of that. So mm-hmm. I, I love that strategy. So yeah, anyone who's listening, if you have own a business and you're, and you're mm-hmm. looking to generate reviews, uh, highly recommend mm-hmm. you put a massive uh, emphasis on mm-hmm. that because it's ultimately going to level you up on Google right. um, and take care of those mm-hmm. reviews uh, in terms of replying to them. It's really right. going to help. Well, and make it easy for folks. You know, yeah. when you send, yeah. say, a, a bill have that QR code on there, yep, um, you know, uh, and, and all of these various things. And again, you know, know who your market is. I mean, you know, yep. if you, if you tell somebody who's not a lot older than me, a QR code, they might go, oh, eh. <laughs> um, you know, but, but if you, you know, and, and so, you know, it's, it mm-hmm. needs to be as easy as possible. Yep. And, and I tell them, you know, yeah, we, we absolutely have to respond. And the funny thing is the vast majority of the time, the person who posted mm-hmm. the review never ever responds positive or negative never. yeah you're responding exactly. for the other people who are reading it exactly um yes. you know and and one of my favorite ones was a hotel that i was looking at and i don't remember where the review was but somebody was scathing mm-hmm. oh my god i couldn't sleep because of all the parties going on in the parking lot and the bar next to us and they were really specific i mean which was mm-hmm. what was so funny about this you know and and this happened and this happened and this happened and i loved the response because they could have just blown it off, but they didn't. Right. They responded and they said, so glad you posted this. However, 
we think you're posting on the wrong hotel because we do not have a bar next door. And I mean, it clearly was the wrong hotel. And right. but they went through point by point yeah, and said, great. you know, there's yeah. not this, there's not this, there's not this. And, and then they said, please come to our hotel because we will show you all of that, you know, the pause, whatever, yeah. you know, they, they use it then as a sales pitch. Yeah, and it was so it. funny because it was yeah. absolutely perfect. And, and I went, okay, I want to stay there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's it's really uh, yeah. Reviews are so mm-hmm. important to your, exactly to your point. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not that we plan to negative reviews. Uh, it, it gives it gives you an mm-hmm. opportunity to to sell your business more and kind of set right. the record straight. But right. yeah, well, and all of the sites, you know, wherever mm-hmm. you're being reviewed, you know, whether it's right. Facebook, Yelp, Google, all of those, mm-hmm. you know, in, sometimes you can turn them off. I mean, like on Facebook, you can turn reviews off, yeah. but you can't pick and choose and go, Oh, I only want the positives. Um, yeah. No, because the the goal of those sites is to be unbiased and, you know, and, which is going to mean you're going to have negative reviews, right? Again, you know, we, we can't always be perfect. We like to think we are, but we're not. And so, you know, they're, they don't allow you to go through and go, I don't like that one, delete it. I don't like that one, delete it. You know, again, unless there's some very specific reason that goes against their standards of service, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, but yeah, I mean, that's, that it, it's and and again make it easy folks make it easy for people sometimes it's just reminding them hey have you given us a review yeah and to the rate through the reminding part there was a some sort of a study came out from mm-hmm. a fellow marketer that i know about reviews and we use the same sort of structure mm-hmm. with the qr code especially mm-hmm. when we're we're working with service-based businesses mm-hmm. and the technicians are going out there right. you know we have small business cards mm-hmm. that have qr codes mm-hmm. and very similar after the job is done yep Going to the business owner and be like, mm-hmm. hey, yeah, here's a QR mm-hmm. code. I can show you how to do it real quick. Go ahead and mm-hmm. leave it. Now, in terms of touches, in terms mm-hmm. of reviews, there, the there's really there needs to there absolutely needs to be three touches in place, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and putting a big focal point on that is going to get those reviews. Mm-hmm. And I forgot what the, the actual numbers are, but you know, the first time you ask someone from a for a review, I think it's like ten percent chance they yeah. do it. Yeah, they're like, yeah, the y'all, I'll get to like, it. Right. The second time is like 20 to 30. And then the third time is like 50 to 60%. Mm -hmm. So it goes up tremendously Mm -hmm. after that third Mm -hmm. touch. The third time they're like, Mm -hmm. oh crap. Yeah. I Mm -hmm. probably should do this. Let's, Mm -hmm. let's do it. Right. So don't give up. If you've sent out um, an email or a Mm -hmm. text message to someone for review, Mm -hmm. contact them three times. You will will eventually get that. Well, and then the other thing is if you get a bad review or multiple Mm -hmm. ones, you want to have more positive ones, right? Sure. Because they start driving them down. And, you know, and, and that's always what I find, you know, works very well is, you know, it, yeah, you, you have something negative, fine. Then you might actually reach out specifically to people who you know are going to give you good reviews and say, you know, hey, Logan, you know, and, and you're not going to say, I had this happen, right? Hey, Logan, have you had a chance to to give us a review? And don't ask for yeah. positive, don't ask for negative, just ask for the review. Um, and so, you know, and, and yeah, drive those negatives down because we all, you know, we look at the first page and, you know, so maybe, you know, depending on what you're looking at and that could be five reviews that might be 10, you know, whatever, we're not really going to scroll. Um, Mm. now sometimes on Amazon, I might specifically look at negative reviews. Okay. I want to see why people were doing this, but yeah, for the the most part, we don't care. You know, we look at, you know, we look just like anytime you do a search, right. You'll look at the first page. Maybe you go to the second page and from then on, it's totally lost. Um, but, but yeah, drive down those negative reviews with positive ones. Yeah. I, um, and kind of going off of the, the, to the personal branding side of this too, you know, um, the the journey that uh, your client to take could be literally going to Google, mm-hmm. going to your senior Google My Business page, mm-hmm. reading the reviews, going to your website. Mm-hmm. Now, if your website isn't built for performance, mm-hmm. that's a drop off point. Right. Second aspect of that is they do that same sort of journey, go to your website. They're still looking for more information. Mm-hmm. Go to your Facebook page. You haven't posted in three to six months. Mm-hmm. Drop off point. Oh, right? yeah. Because so, you're like, oh, they, they're not existing. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So it's we we love to talk about this 360 marketing mm-hmm. strategy, and a lot of that comes down to that personal branding component, mm-hmm. just staying relevant and right. putting in the time to make sure things are mm-hmm. just literally just up to date. And we can mm-hmm. kind of go in a little bit more about specifics of social media mm-hmm. stuff, but like just 
having something there mm -hmm. so there's no drop off mm -hmm. in a customer journey mm -hmm. um, is going to be ultimately super, super mm -hmm. important. And I've seen it all the time. I mean, mm -hmm. it can even go from the Facebook perspective. Mm -hmm. People uh, find you on Facebook, mm -hmm. go to your profile, it's optimized. Again, go to mm -hmm. your website. It's not working properly. Right. Or go to Google, your Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, Google page is set up. Mm -hmm. It's not optimized, right? So these are all drop off points that we like to mm -hmm. look at. Uh, when we talk about any type of mm -hmm. overall marketing strategy right. uh, that needs to be placed. You know, and, and so many times I hear, oh, that's a waste of time or it takes too much, you know, and, 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 or, you know, they say, well, we don't want people on their phones. You know, we want, you know, and, and, but yeah, restaurants in particular, I mean, we were looking yeah. at something the other day, I go to their Facebook page, their last post was eight months ago. Yeah. So my <laughs> first thought was they're not open. Hundred percent. You know, 100%. and and it's so easy for somebody. You know, and, and maybe the owner's not tech savvy, not Facebook savvy. Okay, fine. Then you designate a younger person who is right. right. Um, and and you tell them we need the special of the day posted. We need you to do a quick video on chef preparing something. You know, uh, you know all of these. And and somebody spends 10, 15 minutes doing something then, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be good. And, and the same thing goes with say LinkedIn. You know, if mm -hmm. I look at somebody's LinkedIn yes. profile and they have not posted anything recently, even if it's just sharing something else, I mean, you know, it doesn't right. have to be their own content. Again, I'm thinking, nope, they're not there. They're yeah. not active. Um, and, and I really, you know, especially in this, this business world, I look at people's LinkedIn profiles. If I'm going to do business with them, Interesting. Yeah. is their headshot yeah. current? Right. Is, you know, and, and I mean, I went to somebody's the other day and it was like, oh, honey, your yeah. headshot's a good 20 years old. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. you know, and, and in this day and age, it is really easy to have yeah. somebody, you know, don't do selfies, never do selfies on LinkedIn right. because you get the wrong, wrong angle and all these things. Yep. But you can hand your phone to somebody else and say, I need a new right. shot, right. you know, take this headshot for me. Right. Um, you know, and, and, and especially, you know, it's, it's funny, I was working with a gentleman who uh, did uh, home uh, security systems, right? And so his, and, and I was saying, it was so cute. I go to his LinkedIn profile and his picture is this very professional looking image. I mean, he's in a, a suit and a tie. And, yeah. and I went, and, and so I went to him. Now I, I networked with him. So I knew, you know, and, yeah, and so is, I yeah. said, okay, dude, no, you know, <laughs> it's okay for your LinkedIn picture to be your polo shirt showing a logo. I yeah, mean, absolutely. you've got your baseball cap on right now that says height. Yep. I would probably think that was, you know, that's okay to put on LinkedIn. That's, you know, it's, we've kind of trended towards, we don't have to be quite so squeaky clean, right. but you know, and, and I told him, I said, the polo shirt is fine. I said, but more importantly, that picture, no. And he mm. said, but he said, but I like it. I said, I know mm -hmm. you like it, but it's clearly your wedding picture. And he <laughs> said, but it was the happiest day of my life. And, then, yeah, and I said, yeah. and, and then he said, but how did you know it was a wedding picture? I said, mm -hmm. because nobody wears white silk ties. Right. <laughs> you know? and, and, but, you know, but if I had been looking for him as a business owner, yeah. I would think there's a disconnect, you know, and, yes. and I might not even know what it was, but if he had his polo shirt on with the logo on it, mm -hmm. I'm like, Oh, cool. He, he gets in the, the, he's, he's doing the business. He's the one that's mm -hmm. out there doing it. Um, mm -hmm. you know, the, the wedding picture, eh, maybe not so much. That's such a good point. I mean, and honestly, like the, the more that I see and talk to business owners mm -hmm. and, um, just day-to-day -day stuff, mm -hmm. you know, we are as people on social media, just inundated mm -hmm. with BS things right. that we're just, mm -hmm. everyone's trying to pull a fast one on us. We don't really know what's truthful. Mm -hmm. Um, so going back to that personal branding mm -hmm. component of this, um, being authentic mm -hmm. and be talking about family and business and mm -hmm. things that you love, dislikes, the ups and downs, that whole mm -hmm. thing that you can do right now is such an important mm -hmm. aspect. And it, it's funny I mentioned about LinkedIn because I feel like everyone on LinkedIn who has a profile is, you know, shiny suits and right. that type mm -hmm. of thing. And I, I think there's there's definitely going to be, I'm starting to see a little bit, but there's definitely going to be a, a transition on LinkedIn mm -hmm. to get back to being more authentic. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. we're, I think the, the younger audience is, is doing mm -hmm. a pretty good job of right. Nobody of wears something. suits to work anymore. No, no, <laughs> you know? no, 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 it's, it's not. So again, like we we have learned so much over the, the couple of years of ways to make your profile more authentic and 
and showing up and just being our authentic mm -hmm. self. You know, we had a, a client that a uh, jewelry store owner, mom and pop. Mm -hmm. um, and when we built their website, you know, we took a look at mm -hmm. these jewelry stores around the area and it was very, very stock mm -hmm. imagey. There was little to mm -hmm. no personalization in place. Mm -hmm. We built the website around six, seven years ago. Mm -hmm. And to this day, uh, they still get comments on it because what do we do first and foremost on the header image picture of the owners, you know, mm -hmm. the, the two owners there, yep. Leo and Lisa. Down in school the page, there's mm -hmm. another picture of Leo and Lisa. Down the page, there's another mm -hmm. picture of them, maybe an employee. Mm -hmm. So they still get comments this day mm -hmm. of when they when someone walks mm -hmm. into a store, I'd be like, I saw you on the website. Mm -hmm. That's kind of crazy. And it's really that mm -hmm. small thing mm -hmm. that you can do from a personalization mm -hmm. touch. Mm -hmm. um, and to your point, you know, if they're seeing someone profile picture is mm -hmm. all suited up and everything and mm -hmm. you're OK and you see the guy, it's kind of different. Mm -hmm. that, that right there is that small mm -hmm. thing, right? Like right. you don't know if they're not being authentic mm -hmm. enough or. Or, or at all and it's right. it's a huge separator yeah yeah yeah, yeah i mentioned the the website for my my initiative and it's called trying not to die dot live yes i'll get in my own plug um <laughs> and you know and, and it starts with you know saying that this is not on my schedule and that really is what i told my doctor when she said i had kids i'm like i'm sorry that's not on my schedule <laughs> um and so i had a stock photo of this <clears throat> excuse me very serious looking woman right She's not happy. She's been diagnosed and nobody, you know, people looked at, you know, and, and nobody said too much, but then somebody finally said, you know, that's not you. And then I mm -hmm. had, once one person said it, more people started saying, that's not you. And yeah. so, I thought, okay. You know, but now here was the funny part. I go back, I look through my, you know, I, I had headshots done not real long ago and none were serious. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there was even the outtakes, I mean, nothing. Yeah. There was absolutely wow. nothing where I wasn't smiling, laughing, having a good time. Mm -hmm. And so I called the photographer and I said, wait, I need to do some more headshots. I said, and you got to stop making me laugh. And, and I told her what we were looking for <laughs> that, you know, we really needed the, the serious. And it was, it was a challenge, right? You know, yeah. I'm not that, you know, even when I'm serious, I don't have, you know, and, and, and you don't want to get the furrowed brow, you know, and you don't want to look. Yes. And, and so it was, it was interesting because it was, how do you get that serious, thoughtful look without maybe going into that grinchy, bitchy territory? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and, and so, but yeah. And, and, and now I have people comment. It's exactly what you said about the jewelers. That's you. Therefore, we're going to trust you. Yes. 100%. That's, that's, mm -hmm. it, if there was one recommend, recommendation I could say through this whole entire conversation mm -hmm. so far is to be your authentic right. self. Right. Everyone needs it mm -hmm. and it shows up online mm -hmm. and people will recognize it for you and want to do business with you right. ultimately. Right. Well, and then there's this little thing called empathy. So tell us a little yes. bit more about that. Oh man. Yeah. E empathetic marketing is a term that I, uh, myself and a couple others have been throwing around mm -hmm. within the market space. You probably heard it too, obviously, mm -hmm. but um, it just goes back to... Within the marketing world, there are so many marketing agencies mm -hmm. that are really focused on money and scaling. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've gone to the point now being in this whole world for about five years, I'm debating about writing a book um, on, on how to put the human back into digital marketing, right? Mm -hmm. Because I think, I think I, again, we're, we're, I'm seeing this transition of how what can we do to be more personable mm -hmm. in the in the world right. of technology? Kind of like and, the LinkedIn yeah. photo where you're wearing the suit and tie. Yes. That's not yes. you. That's not you. And we, I've seen countless times, again, uh, a good friend of mine who used to have an agency uh, has moved into personal branding. And mm -hmm. he shows this day to day um, in, in how personal branding and being your true self mm -hmm. can move the needle for you if mm -hmm. you're looking to grow your business. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, when I do when I do anything or talk to a client, mm -hmm. it's the empathy part of this is just who I am. So I, I think, you know, I'm, I guess I'm lucky in that in that mm -hmm. aspect. Um, but all I want to do is be of service to others and help where I can. And if it's mm -hmm. not a good fit, then it's totally fine. We'll right. go help you find someone else or you know, whatever we can do mm -hmm. to help you in your business. Cause mm -hmm. just like myself, mm -hmm. I'm trying to grow as a person, mm -hmm. uh, trying to help my family mm -hmm. and just survive in this crazy world mm -hmm. of ours. So the empathy comes first and, and you know, instantly uh, who is empathetic mm -hmm. and who is right. not, you can, you can have a pretty good idea on that. And again, luckily I've been, I've just been blessed to the fact mm -hmm. that people that I'm surrounding myself with mm -hmm. are very much of that similar mm -hmm 
cloth. They're just very empathetic people and want to do things for the right reasons. So, yeah, I mean, again, it comes down to business owners, whatever, like, mm -hmm. you know, showing a true personality mm -hmm. and just being of service to others. Uh, having that open mindset is is ultimately going to mm -hmm. take you to that next part that you are looking to get to. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because we buy and we work with people we know, like, and trust. Um, yes. You know, and yes. <laughs> and um, you know, and, and it's funny. I was having a conversation in a mastermind group that I'm in about influencers, and yep. in particular, ones who are paid to promote yep. something. Now we've yep. had this for years. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, this this is nothing new. Michael Jordan is probably one of the first ones that really started doing it with yeah. with tennis shoes, mm -hmm. but you know, it was. It, it's 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 interesting if i see a commercial i'm like okay they were paid to do that but when it's somebody on social you do mm -hmm. tend to think more about them as that person mm -hmm. and so then when they're selling stuff it's like yeah no i don't think you actually use that you're paid to do that. <laughs> and, you know, and, and it was funny because we were laughing about the Kardashians. Right. Oh, yeah. Um, and the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and, but yeah, or, you know, my, my favorite is like when somebody like, Oh, say Jennifer Aniston is talking about over the counter hand lotion. Oh yeah. you, no, right. you know, uh -uh. <laughs> I know that that's you know, and, and there's nothing, I mean, you know, they have the money to buy mm. the more expensive product. Okay. Now they might actually use what, you know, the right. Jergens or whatever, but, <laughs> um, but, but yeah. And, and that's where, and I think we are all influencers, even Certainly. if we're just influencing five people. Certainly. And so, you know, do people believe what we're saying or are they thinking they're in it for the money? Mm -hmm. Certainly. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Um, the component of, of everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and that took me a little bit, a little while to kind of step into my own shoes, right? Because as mm -hmm. a business owner or entrepreneur, you don't really know if mm -hmm. you have that voice. You don't mm -hmm. believe like no one's going to mm -hmm. believe me. No right. one's going to trust me. Mm -hmm. um, but it just comes down to to showing up and just mm -hmm. telling your truth. Mm -hmm. And everyone has something to right. provide to others. And everyone some people are going to go, no, don't want to work with that. Okay, right. then you didn't want right. to anyway. Right. Right. And ultimately, that's going to save you at the end of the day from mm -hmm. working with someone that you don't want to work with. Right. right? So like mm -hmm. um, everyone has a voice and it takes a while to mm -hmm. find it. Uh, mm -hmm. It takes some some misses mm -hmm. and some wins to to find what that is. Um, to your point, a business owner who has a roofing company has the ability to be their uh, and own their own mm -hmm. influencer within their community, mm -hmm. showing up, mm -hmm. talking about the core values. Mm -hmm. The goods, the bads mm -hmm. about the business, mm -hmm. sharing value and so forth. And that that is that is that is mm -hmm. the name of the game right, right. there. For right. a business perspective, mm -hmm. uh, that's the name of the game mm -hmm. ultimately. Right. Yeah. And you know, it, it is tricky because yeah. if we're putting ourselves out there, people might go, ooh, ah, mm. um, you know, and and I remember I was asked one time by a gentleman who was very political in his posts. And, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I mean, that part of that was he, that was him. He was being mm -hmm. authentic to himself. And mm -hmm. he said, what do you think? And I said, well, it, you have to do what you think is right. I mean, yeah. you, you know, I don't, I don't ever post politics, even if it's a joke, because somebody's not going to think it's a joke. Right. Um, right. But I told him, I said, you do understand that you're probably going to alienate about half mm -hmm. you know, yeah. of who your potential clients could be. And he said, you know, that's, that's fine. I wouldn't want to work with them anyway. Okay. Then, then that's okay. But so people just have to understand that. Um, I worked with a, a young girl one time who um, her t-shirt that she had in, in many of her pictures on social said proud Muslim. And okay. again, I talked to her and I said, you know, yeah. you do. And she said, I wouldn't want to work with someone mm -hmm. if that was an issue. I, and she said, mm -hmm. so she actually uses it as a way uh, to kind of, you know, people can, can self eliminate, <laughs> right. Um, you know, and, and I said, as long as you understand that, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it can be anything. I mean, I, on, on my social, I post a lot about the university of Colorado. I live in Atlanta, but yes, I'm a Colorado person. Um, and we have, Oh, uh, we got a bit, we got a basketball game coming up on Saturday. Where yeah. we're, playing, we're not, we're not playing. I, we're playing Caitlin. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. so, you know, and, and I tell people, 
you know, if you're not a University of Colorado fan, you might not like my posts. Okay, then you probably aren't going to like me. Um, (laughs) But but yeah, and so just recognize that Mm -hmm. when you're being authentic, you might be eliminating people, but that's okay. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, Mm -hmm. um, one one of the worst things that I think you could do as an entrepreneur or a business owner, and we're looking to start your businesses, and that this happens, this happens to me over and over again. Is is, is working with clients because you need to, and mm-hmm. then ultimately finding out that it's right. just the worst experience mm-hmm. ever. And and a lot of times when <laughs> we're starting out, especially, that yeah. happens. Yeah, we it, have, have bills to, right? that we have to pay. Yes. Sure, sure. You 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 absolutely have to make that jump, mm-hmm. um, and, and uh, make money, mm-hmm. right? right? But uh, yeah, finding very. Mm-hmm putting a major emphasis mm-hmm. on who it is that you want to work with right. and, and finding that that mm-hmm. core group is going to save you so mm-hmm. much time and money in the mm-hmm. long run. Right. And uh, that's this, part of I, that avatar. I mean, we just barely even yeah. scratch that surface. I mean, that yeah. really is part of that avatar is yeah. they, you know, they like this, they don't like that, you know, all of mm-hmm. those things. Um, yep. Because yeah, we, we only have finite resources. So why waste them yep. on somebody that's going to go? Nope, not so much. Yeah, it's a big it's a big mistake. Uh, I've been there quite a bit. I'm sure you have mm-hmm. too. So it's like yeah. you know, uh, it's learning again. Back to the finding I see as a business mm-hmm. owner, but as a marketer, mm-hmm. entrepreneur, doing that same sort of mm-hmm. process that you would for them, doing mm-hmm. it for you. It's going to mm-hmm. save you so much time and effort in the long right. run. Right. I love it. Well, oh my gosh, Logan, this is so much fun. And there are several That's... topics we didn't even touch on, so we just have to chat with you again. <laughs> um, so you know, tell us though, tell us more about Height Digital. And yeah. you're specifically in Manchester, but tell us more about, you know, how do people find you and what are the services that you provide? Yeah, again, we're just luckily to, to join a group of individuals. Now, the, the entire group, uh, the fulfillment team, corporate, it's down in Nicaragua. Um, so I, I went down there and okay. I, I, I met everyone down Fun. there and trained and learned about mm-hmm. the culture mm-hmm. for a week. And it was just a, an amazing experience. Mm-hmm. And there's there's so much good that we're doing mm-hmm. Um you know, for, for Nicaraguans down there. Mm-hmm. And it's just uh, a great thing. It makes mm-hmm. it so, you know, when I'm selling something, it's actually helping out some mm-hmm. similars down there. So there's a good initiative to it. Um, but we handle everything. I mean, we have an amazing fulfillment team that handles all sorts of digital marketing. We have an amazing design department, mm-hmm. anything from logos to brand manuals to websites, you name mm-hmm. it. So we're basically a full-fledged marketing mm-hmm. agency that can handle it. Mm-hmm. Um, we also, like as mentioned, we have other franchises that are really some are niched down, some aren't, mm-hmm. but we have a lot of experience mm-hmm. in many different industries. So we know very, very well right. what works and what doesn't work. Mm-hmm. So we can get that solution faster. Mm-hmm. Um, I position my agency more on the communication and partnership aspect and okay. relationships because mm-hmm. so many business owners that I've talked to, um, they might be working with an agency that's actually doing really good work. Mm-hmm. They just can't get in touch with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, it takes a week or two weeks mm-hmm. or even a month. And mm-hmm. I've heard so many horror stories. So, you know, I'm very part of let's set mm-hmm. up communication. Let's get a communication mm-hmm. uh, cadence down first and foremost, and let's build a relationship mm-hmm. uh, along the way. And to me, that's helped um, the retention rate on my side be close to two to three years, you mm-hmm. know, so uh, we, we really hone in on that, that aspect. Uh, you can simply find me online on Facebook. I'm very mm-hmm. active on Facebook. Uh, I love just talking to people mm-hmm. there. So look up Logan Hughes. It's a green profile background with the goofy face. That's me. Um, uh, I'm on there. I do have a podcast to get a job podcast where we entre- we uh, you know, interview other entrepreneurs, business owners, and mm-hmm. kind of try to shed some mm-hmm. light on any type of value they can bring mm-hmm. to the younger mm-hmm. audience. Um, so yeah, uh, that's the get a job podcast.com. Um, find me on Facebook. Mm-hmm. I'm on LinkedIn and Instagram and all that good stuff, but uh, if you want to reach me out directly from anything marketing related, it's uh, heightdigital.com slash Manchester. Um, I love that's it. That's where you can reach me directly. Very cool. Well, oh my gosh, we have been having such a great discussion. Yeah. This has been so much fun. Do you have any final thoughts that you want to leave everyone with? Yeah, I, it's funny. I, I asked a similar question to uh, to the guests of my my podcast as well. You know, if you could give one one tip, piece of advice for younger entrepreneurs, what would it be? Um I think I think from what I've learned so far in my experience is just a belief in yourself um, to to put forth and uh, and and let and just know that if you're doing things for the right reasons, it will pan out. Now you might take some L's, you might take some W's along the way, but ultimately that belief in yourself is is something I, I've learned, and I wouldn't be where I am right now without that core belief. So. 
um, you know, what I what I like to touch base with and, and talk about to the younger entrepreneurs is really finding that why. And this is a whole different conversation, but really digging deep into the why where you read it and you get emotional. Um, and that's something that I did years and years ago, and I still have it to this day. Um, and I, 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 when things get tough, when things get, you know, major fires and neighbor put out, uh, I go back and read that. So um, belief in yourself and really finding in the why, finding what the, what the why is and, you know, just, just using as, as a, as an anchor going forward, I think will definitely be beneficial. So. Oh my gosh. I love it. I love it. Well, I am Deb Creer. I've been having a great discussion with Logan Hughes, the CEO of Height Digital in Manchester, New Hampshire. And until next time, everyone have a great day. Tune in for our next program for even more trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. The Business Power Hour, hosted by Deb Creer, is proud to be part of the C-Suite Network.